freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your mega preview pod for this week's Houston Open Storylines Best Bets One and Done. Joining me to break it all down, Greg Ducharme is here. Hello, Greg. Hey, guys. Uh, looking forward to the conversation today. Uh, Houston Open, big time golf course, moving into a new time slot. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we were a few minutes behind because I was getting a crash course on tennis from Patrick McDonald. Hello, Patrick. Rick, gentlemen, good to see you. Uh, also, looking forward to today's conversation. And I mean, lucky for Jason Day, the Houston Open's not middle of the summer with uh, what he might be wearing out there. Oh, <laughs> March date this time around. Kyle Porter is here. KP, good day. Yeah, hello, Rick. Uh, it is a good day. Uh, got a ton of work done today. Got a, got a. I'm like deep on the Masters already. Patrick and I have been kind of going back and forth a little bit. Bas basically, it's been me telling Patrick I'm deep on the Masters, and he's like, "Really? Are you already?" And I'm like, "Yeah, since like February." Good for yeah. you. More yeah, I'm locked in. I was tweeting out stats today. I did the ring arounds, best best hole, like highest score ever at all the holes at Augusta National, and lowest score ever. Those were fun. People enjoyed those. So it's been. I'm fired up for the Masters. I'm fired up for the Houston Open, but I'm also fired up for the Masters. And I, that means you're only like three weeks away from uh, going way in on the Ryder Cup, which is pretty exciting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Maybe four. But yeah, we're getting in that territory, <laughs> Greg. We need a captain. We need a U.S. captain before right, I go right. all the way. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just think about the Ryder Cup ramifications of X, Y, and Z for the next uh, eight months or so. Uh, well, I've been getting deep on on tennis that's why we were late i was asking patrick like wait a minute how does this work and is, is there always doubles and yada 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 and then i was learning about rafael nadal's record at the french open patrick which what did we say his record was uh 14 uh, titles okay 112 okay. wins three losses okay so <laughs> he's lost three matches in his entire french open career correct his uh Okay. What what's the what's the golf the, his staggering rating must be just extraordinary. I mean, what is the golf equivalent of that? Uh, three sure people have beaten Rafael Nadal at the French Open. <laughs> I'm sure there's a staggering for for tennis. There's probably they've got it for everything. Yes, that it yes it, that would that would make sense. And then where we stopped our pre pod conversation was kyle saying i want to name his three losses live on the show so <laughs> i've i've found I have, I have no chance i had to look these up so i found the three matches that rafael nadal has lost uh at the french open in his career so kp this is your time to shine okay so for some reason in my head i i have um richard gasquet the frenchman <laughs> That's not right. That's what? not. Oh, Richard Gasquet beat somebody in a big moment. Maybe he beat Roddick in like a final or something. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I'm. I'm gonna. They have lost. played three times to, to at the French uh, Open. At the French, he is zero okay. three against Rafa though. Okay, okay. So, uh, so let's think this through, KP. Here we go. So not Richard Gasquet. Um. What about? Oh, who's the Argent Argentinian Argentine, Patrick? Don't don't get fancy. Uh, uh, Del po uh, Martin Del Potro. No, no, no. Don't uh, don't get fancy. No, uh, Djokovic. Yeah. Okay, so that's two of them. Djokovic. <laughs> so Djokovic beat him in the quarterfinals in fifteen, and in the semis in twenty twenty one. So and I think two. Of them. I th I think the year Fed won. It was because Nadal was hurt. I think he didn't play. It was like oh nine or ten or something like that. So the the website that I'm that I'm looking at says uh, about this person. It will be remembered that. Well, I, I don't know if this is tennis lingo or if this is a typo, but I'm just going to read it word for word. It says it will be remembered that he throw at Rafa sixty one winner. Oh, Rafa six one winner in route to his four set shocker. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, Here, KP. Here, here's a better hint. This I, might be a Michael Campbell situation. Do I know this person? Probably not. But he was I, in the finals in '09 and '10 at the French Open. 
Swedish. Marat Safin. Swedish. Yeah. So, so the uh, the chat says that Swedish guy, which is which is definitely down the right path. Henrik Stenson. I don't, I don't know. Ooh, Robin. we were actually looking for Henrik Norlander. Robin <laughs> Soderling. Robin. Robin so okay, I know the name. I, I wouldn't have gotten that. Who did Richard Gasquet beat? Yeah, it, some, it was a famous. It was a famous mat. It was a famous deal. I think it was like maybe he beat Fed or somebody in like a final to win something that he shouldn't have. So while you're looking that up, Roger Federer won 13 French Open titles. Uh, and, Nadal. Oh, Nadal. And at the same time, Federer won 20 Grand Slam titles. And Djokovic won 24 Grand Slam titles. And yeah, basically, present, present the French tense. is a present tent. Yeah, has one to this point. And the French Open is like not available. So those other two guys won 24 and 20 without the French being really an open spot. Well, th that, there's it's just unreal. It's it's crazy. There's some number out there. I, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but it's like those three, those, those three guys plus Murray plus who was the other Swiss guy, Patrick? Um, the the uh, huh? Walrenka, Stan Walrenka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those five guys won like eighty out of eighty-five Grand Slam. So, something stupid. If you think Jack Nicholas's wiki page is sick, go look up Grand Slam winners wiki page. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Insane. It's it's very cool. I mean, I'm sure if you're into tennis, it got a little old, but as a just sort of like casual fan, I thought it was pretty awesome. We should be doing a tennis one and done. <laughs> <laughs> should we? I take that Argentinian guy. For... I can't even keep track of the golf one and done. I would to be have honest. Certain... All but three guys, I think, is where I is where I would have to start. Um, what's the clay court of golf? TGL. No, um, it's like, got to be like the Lincoln, Lynx right? golf. Yeah. Uh, is it? Is that the oldest form? What is when is uh, the grass court Augusta National? For sure. Yeah. Yep. With the rules with Wimbledon and everything, right? Yeah. I mean, imagine Nick Curios walking into Augusta National. It's not going over well. There's a lot of crossovers. Between Just hollering at everybody. <laughs> I think. Uh, I did you watch the tennis documentary, Patrick? Yeah. R.I.P. They're canceling it. Was it good? It was all right. I think uh, it seems like with all of them the core fan like the really close fan isn't really uh too enthused by it just because they're like oh the way they edit this or that it, it's not really how it happened but i liked it i know they're coming out with one on uh alcarez by himself so i wonder if that's kind of the route it, it goes moving forward isn't he like 17 yeah like 20 something real real young we were uh, talking we were talking about uh, the Otani stuff the other day, the <laughs> Otani betting stuff. Did you see the NBA stuff that came out since then? Since we talked, yeah. oh man. headlines. Toronto's rap Toronto Raptors forward John Tay Porter under investigation by the NFL for multiple instances of betting irregularities. So, basically, two instances of a ton of money coming in on his under props. He plays three minutes in one game and leaves because of eye irritation. And he leaves after four minutes in another game because of uh, re-aggravating a past injury. And it's like, you know, a thousand X amount of money has come in on, on that night that has ever come in on John Tay Porter in his life. That is about as clear cut as it gets, I think. Yeah. Wow. What a dummy. That's not good. I mean, he's probably never. And there was something the with the uh, the Cleveland uh, Cavs coach too. What was that? Um, he was like threatened by threatened by betters. I just saw a headline on it. I didn't read about it. Yeah, he came out and said that him and his family were threatened by. I I, I mean, I don't know if it was like a tweet or like they sent a 
we got anthrax 2.0 i don't i don't know what the like what actually happened but yeah there you go oh company man producer josh are we are we getting to a problem as so i, I mean listen i i'm obviously i live in this world but like are we is this becoming a problem well re real quick i want i want actually I want you to answer that because you're the best position to do so uh, Richard Gasquet, this is what I was thinking of. He beat Andy Roddick in five sets at the <laughs> 2007 Wimbledon semifinals because it was going to be Roddick and Fed. I think I, I think the reason I remember this is I was, I think I was there. I think I was in London, either 07 or 08, maybe it was 08, maybe it was the year after. So I was like kind of paying attention to tennis, and it was going to be Roddick, Federer, and on one side, and then Nadal and uh, Djokovic on the other side. But Gasquet beat him in five sets, and he beat him eight six in the last set. And I remember just being devastated because I loved Roddick. It was, it was tough. So memorable that it that it took a lot of googling to find it. Andy Roddick might be the Xander Shoffley of uh, tennis. <laughs> he actually won a major. He who's so he's kind of like the um, yeah who's somebody that was like a like won early and then never just sort of didn't couldn't capture it again like somebody he won it like he won the u.s open when he was like 20. francis we met no ben, ben curtis no you guys are clowns <laughs> um what's jason deck it's it's a little it, it would almost be like if Spieth hadn't won that 2017 open. Like he did the 2015 thing and then just didn't do anything ever again. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, here's what we'll do. Josh is hollering for a break. So we're going to we're going to reset. We'll get our eyes on uh some new topics, but first we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. We need your sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. And we're back. The the sports betting stuff, KP, just to give you yeah. my thoughts on this. Yeah. So it, it is... Um, it's a very poorly constructed web that is causing problems for everyone. And I say that as someone who enjoys it, loves it. I, there are obviously a lot of pros uh, to it. There's a lot more money. There's a lot more interest in sports that have that has have not had interest in them before. But the the every different state has different rules and regulations, which creates um, a mess for operators and does not hold operators accountable. Operators then pass that down to betters and do not have to be as competitive. They can ban winning players, but they can advertise like crazy to losers or people that might be... Um, addicts quite honestly and then those users turn around and are taking it out on players uh coaches each other all because this it's just like no one no one is being held accountable by anybody else and there's not a, a good enough mature enough structure we just we just opened the floodgates of 40 states and billions of dollars and said good luck have fun. We'll catch you later. And now we're reaping the consequences of that. I got a, I got another question for you, Rick. Because some of these things, like, okay, a player is going to be, let's say, let's say a player is bribed, which it sounds like. Uh, let's say a uh, betters are threatening a coach and his family. How, whatever the manner is, they're doing that is irrelevant. It, it it's. A very strange thing for me that the legality of betting would cause that. Like I look at the legality of betting and worry about the advertising to addicts. 
right? Because advertising works. It's really powerful and it creates a problem for people. But it seems like these really big problems are with like professional level, you know, high stakes gamblers. And I wonder, like, did they just start gambling when it became legal? That they're in order to win legal gambling, they're using illegal tactics. It just it seems very confusing to me. Well, no. Real quick, I, I I think it's just like a compounding of of like things. I don't know that it's. I think it's like <clears throat> all these things stacked on top of each other, and the one that gets the most press is the one that's the sexiest, and so. I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily like, I think that issue has been there before. It's just getting more attention because you have other things kind of, kind of pushing it up the news totem pole, if you will. Yeah, there is more eyeballs on it in general and these types of headlines. I mean, what, what is, what has probably been happening, whether sports betting has been legal or not, and I'm sure it's still happening right now is, is, you know, there was a story from a couple of years ago where, this like she was like the 200th ranked ten, women's tennis player in the world and she was getting paid a thousand dollars to lose her first game every time she every time she lost her first game she get a thousand dollars and it's like doesn't matter what you do after that you win you win the match you win your next five games it doesn't matter you just have to lose your first one and presumably they're putting you know two thousand on it or something like that and every single time it, it's it's only when john tay porter's props go from no money wager over a month to hundreds of thousands of dollars in a night that he comes out three. Like that's the stupidest way to try to do what you're doing in 2024. But there are probably a lot of instances because these entities, these entities are putting up lines for Russian table tennis and, and, and sports that are only being live streamed to two people in like, far off play it's just it's mind-boggling where we've gotten to so I, I got my hands on one of uh porter's bet slips it was a uh six leg parlay all unders 80k to win 1.2 million so he threw away his career for that did you see the video of him is that true making, yeah uh, came across my desk recently <laughs> that that was are you are you being like is that yes public knowledge i don't know if it's public knowledge but it is now. now did you just break did you just break news no 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 it was out there are we an nba show <laughs> beyond the arc um what was i gonna say i totally forget so he throws away he throws it away for 1.2 i'm uh, presuming it's him right or i mean uh, like where where all this comes from is I, the the people who would be smart enough to be able to pull something like this off are also dumb enough to put 80k in on a on a six leg prop on DraftKings or whatever it is. DraftKings. I don't know, man. I think but, it was probably his friends. But did you see I the think... video of him making a three, and then the face he made? No. Uh -uh. He was jogging backwards after he like made it, and he's like. Oh my god! Like oh gosh, I was not trying to make that shot. That's not good. Kind <laughs> uh, of thing that can ruin sports. I was going to ask you something, Rick. It's definitely, it's definitely, um, Greg. It's not. I don't think it's a huge problem at the highest levels, but. I think it's a, it could potentially be a problem at like 99% of the rest of them. Right. Like, and that's even, and, and that is even saying like, yes, that's a problem in the NBA. That's the highest league out there. John Tay Porter, not necessarily the, like you, you could probably not bribe LeBron James to, to do something like this. Cause there's, he has too much money and there's, but you know what I mean? It's like, there's so many other things that are viable. But if that affects the low end of the spectrum in a game where LeBron James is playing, you know, it brings it brings his accomplishments into question. Like it just brings things into question that I don't want to question as a sports fan. I don't want to wonder if that was if that was real. Oh, did he let Steph Curry go because, you know, he's supposed to lose the game? I, I, I just don't want to wonder that. And there are ways to. There are ways to play to win and lose, you know, and, and win in gambling. 
Like it, it's so cl- evident in golf with matchups and things like that too. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. been going just, around. Just follow this podcast; <laughs> you'll learn how to lose a match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're clearly not bribing anybody. <laughs> I mean, stuff like uh, this has been happening forever. You think about Tim Donaghy fixing games. That was like I mean, what a decade and a half. He was I think doing about it? the 1919 White Sox a hundred years ago. This was happening. Yeah, I think it's um, I the, the thing that I go back to, and I've I've. I haven't gone deep on this topic. I, I've kind of listened to a couple pods about it and read very, very little. But the thing that gets me, Rick, is is the marketing. And I was talking to some friends about this the other day, who are not who are like kind of pay attention to golf, but just care more about sports in general. And they're like, "Man, people that are they're a little bit younger, and they're like people that are younger even than them." He's like, "They are like they can't even watch sports without having." money on it and i think the thing that i keep going back to is this idea that it's a it's a you can't win because if you win they remove your ability to win and i think that that is uh, ethan strauss has been good on this he he writes a, a sub stack he's got a podcast and that just seems so insidious and i don't think that most people know about like that's like contractual language that they can well, I don't know like how it's written, but they take take yeah. away your ability to earn. How do they say? Yeah, it? They could do a couple things, right? They're a business that could just refuse your business, right? Like any like any business could, or they could limit you and say, "Okay, Kyle, you're th- you know thanks for your business, but the most that you're allowed to bet on any one game is two dollars and fifty cents." Have yeah. at it, right? Yeah. And while they're raising limits for people that probably should not have their limits limits raised that the advertising thing I think is a problem because even, even um, like, okay, you expect businesses to advertise, but have you noticed the uptick in parlay games, single game parlays are like all the rage right here. I mean, they are, they, they pre make parlays on these sites and say, Hey, just click it. We've already, we've already made it for you. Right. Yeah. And, and those are the highest margin item that they have. You, if you read these reports, like parlays are such a big money maker for books. And that's the one thing that they keep telling you, Oh, well, turn your hundred bucks into 10,000. They, why, why do sports books show winning tickets on Twitter? When someone turns 50 bucks into 500,000, they never show the ones that turn $5 into $10. Those never make it across my Twitter, believe it or not. That's yeah. the stuff that is, I think, very impactful to people. Yeah. Yeah. Day and it, and age it too. Works. Like, you works. know how to advertise yeah. in 2024. And it and works. I think, I think what's really interesting, and, and we can we can move on. We don't need to spend the whole show talking about this, but... I've read a lot recently about um, like uh, broadcast rights and how they're just kind of like, I think they're more ambiguous now than they were 20 years ago. I think 20 years ago, you're like, okay, this is going up. It's going to continue to go up. It led to a lot of dudes like getting rich. Like, Like if you were an athlete, specifically NFL, NBA, that was born in like 1997, like, that was awesome for you and or a PGA tour player for that matter. The problem Rick is that <clears throat> as broadcast rights get more ambiguous, leagues have to turn to other revenue sources to maintain uh current south, sal- whatever the, whatever the revenue is. And that's where it's like, y- you're making decisions that you almost don't even care what the ramifications are 20 years from now because you're just trying to get to next year as a league and and the nfl is a little bit outside of that because they just make money no matter what they do but all these other like i'm thinking about the nba like their broadcast rights are kind of people don't know what's going to happen and so i think it's a very natural thing to turn to other revenue streams and that's a really easy one but the irony is that it might end up alienating your fan base because they can't even watch a game after they run out of money because that's all they've ever known is is watching a game with money on it. The tail is wagging the dog now, right? Totally. 
Yeah, they're they're and they found a a source of income, an advertising dollars that, I mean, there's a lot of money uh, in sports books and fantasy and all that stuff. So yeah, it's it is definitely a. Um, I don't want to say it's a problem. I mean, I but I think it's I think it's a problem. Could Rick could um, sports books remain profitable if uh, if say the government treated them like uh, like cigarette companies? You, um, you can do you can do it, but you can't advertise. I'm not sure about all the restrictions on um, on on tobacco companies, but the thing the thing that I think because it's state by state and these companies have to go and they have to get a license in every single state. And some states are a lot more strict than others. And some states want 50% of your revenue. Some want 10%, right? Like that, if there was a, Hey, you know, sports books are going to pay 15% across the board or whatever that is. Would they not have to be so aggressive in their advertising of parlays or would that just be a larger margin? I don't know, but I think that the uncertainty of business for these sports books and how they differ from state to state also makes it a cash grab for them too, where it's like, well, we better get ours now because literally yeah. who knows how long this is going to be around. What was so the thing you said about, about parlays there, Rick? They're just so they're just by far the biggest moneymaker for these sports books. And now they're like the only thing being aggressively advertised. Oh, so you're saying if the app, you were talking about if the advertising got taken away, like with, right. with their margin on that, just go down. Is or, that what or, you're saying? Or I'm saying like, if they didn't have to pay 50% of their revenue to some state, would they be more willing to have other ads that are not single game parlays? Mm. Right? Would they is, that what, to- is that what they have to pay? 50%? I'm pretty sure. Um, I'll, I'll, look, I don't, I'll look up New York, but, um, There are, I mean, there are states where you have to pay millions of dollars to get like a license and then like a massive percentage of your revenue. So your margin has to be whatever, 55% just to even be viable. Correct. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. If I if I I can. Well, I will say if they're paying 50% to the states, uh, or some of them, those states are not going to be very quick to shut down anything relating to that business because that's a lot. That's a big income stream for the state. Totally, but I, it just for me, <clears throat> Greg and I wrote about this with Peter Malnati on Sunday night. I, I did the, a little like sort of a mini column on Twitter, um, but like so much of sports now is looked at through the lens of economic um like what's best economically and not what's best for like the human beings that are involved and i'm not saying you're wrong like i think i think what you're saying is correct like states will be slow to shut things like that down because it is an economic windfall but it it just is like oh you don't really necessarily care about like the human beings in your state you just care about like your government having more money or whatever and that's very reductive yeah and terrible. like I'm, I'm overstating that but it it i just feel like everything is looked at through that lens right now and especially we've experienced that a ton in golf recently and i just it, it bums me out i think it's a bad way to live life i couldn't agree more uh real quick massachusetts DraftKings paid a one-year, $1 million license fee and 20% of gross sports wagering, gross sports wagering. Um, In Massachusetts, uh, the mobile stuff gets taxed at 51%. There's a lot. So, like, if I bet a hundred dollars, the state gets fifty-one dollars of that, or is it what they what the book brings it, in? Yeah, it would be what the book brings in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
anyway, uh, I'll be the czar of sports books uh, later. That's a that's a secondary title. We are going to talk about the Houston Open. We are going to give our best bets. We are going to give our one and done selections. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. It's time for the madness. And CBS Sports HQ has your wall to wall NCAA tournament coverage. We got your game highlights, expert analysis, and insights all the way to the final four. Start and end your March Madness coverage with CBS Sports HQ. And we're back. All right, Patrick, give us the lowdown on Houston. We've got two events in Texas. Scotty Scheffler is back at it again, and he's not alone. Wyndham Clark, Sahith. Jason Day, Wills Altoris, amongst others, in the top 30 of the OWGR. Yeah, pretty uh, nice top-heavy field. Top two players in the world by some people's standards with uh, Scheffler and Clark. And then Houston, by the players' accounts so far in the interviews, a little slower, a little softer than what they were used to in the fall. Played here three times. I believe the first time was the week before the November masters i could be wrong on that and then uh we've had guys like jason kokrak tony finau kind of ran away from the field uh in the fall of 22 i remember had a very good week driving the golf ball but wide open not a lot of trees unfortunately we can't bring up the brooks kepka player consultant narrative on this golf course this week that's a real shame but uh yeah, top heavy field, and last time we're going to see a lot of these guys for the Masters, and it's also the cutoff for the Masters with the uh, the top fifty in the OWGR. So, a lot to play for, and uh, Scotty Scheffler is probably going to win again. <laughs> yeah, Greg. I mean, there are a lot of ramifications here. Last week, outside of a win in San Antonio to get yourself into the Masters, and you know Scotty's going for three in a row. But like, outside of Scotty Scheffler, is there someone specifically that you're going to be locked into? Maybe it's Will Zalatoris. Maybe it's maybe it's Tony Finau, who's played well here in the past, but it's kind of coming in some rough stuff. Like, who are you laser focused on? Yeah, uh, Tony Finau would be my second guy behind Scotty Scheffler, uh, and the reason for that is his results have been very average. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday, Rick. I, I have a theory that it's just kind of get me out of Florida. Uh, Florida golf not great for Tony Finau. He's been a little inaccurate off the tee a little wild off the tee. Uh, and that kind of thing can play well at um, at a, a golf course like this. As Patrick said, it's wide open. I mean, it's Memorial Park. We're playing in a park. It's a big park, but it's open. You know, and then you go to Augusta National and you, you can get away with some errancy. So I'm really curious to see where Tony Finau's game is uh, aside from his driving. Once he gets past the tee shot, uh, is he going to be all right? Is he going to be able to contend? Is he going to be able to step up if he does get in contention and and still play and compete? Because what I've seen from his statistics this year, things are trending in the right direction, and there's something big on the horizon for him. Uh, that might be a win in Houston again. Uh, it might be something even bigger than that. But I, I think it's trending in the right way, and this is a really big litmus test for me to see if uh, to see if I'm right or not. Greg has been teasing the Tony Finau green jacket uh, <laughs> moment for at least three weeks now. And it would, be, if it happens, it would be the greatest, <laughs> like we'll put together this clip show of Greg, you know, doing modest and not so modest hints at Tony <laughs> Finau being <laughs> before Masters. Something big, Me? something big. Not sure. Big in about, I don't know, three weeks from now. <laughs> it's going to be big and it's going to be green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, KP, the other thing that I would be foaming at the mouth for is to enter Masters Week with Scotty Shuffler winning three in a row. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's DJ in what was that 2017 when he fell down the stairs? Mm, yep. Alle allegedly. Asterisk on Sergio's green jacket. Good call, <laughs> KP. I mean, I've got one. <laughs> I don't know if if other people do. Uh, I just I th I'm throwing stuff at Josh. I don't know if you got this, Josh, but I just threw you Tony Finau's data golf profile, which if we could pull that up, I I've got something to pop Greg with here. The trend, oh, Greg, oh. is not good. It's, it's, it's not, not good. good. No. Mm. Okay. He started off the year hot. <clears throat> uh, go down here. 
Josh. Okay, look at look at the look at the last can I click on 2024 only and look at his start at the bottom. That's his first tournament. And look at the approach play over mm -hmm. the like leading into this week. It's awesome at the farmers. Gets a little worse, a little worse, a little worse, a little worse, a little worse. And now it's negative at the Valspar. Like every week it's been a little bit worse. Yeah. I mean, except in, you know, in where there's no water and it's wide open, he gained nearly five strokes approaching the green. So I, I still think that's pretty darn good. Is it as good as gaining seven strokes at the farmers? No, but I think you're still on par with that. Um, and last week at the Valspar, again, it's it's Florida. Florida's not for Tony. So I'm expecting to see that return form this week. I almost picked him to miss the cut as my best bet this week. All right. I think I think one more thing regarding the approach play is Finau is a much better mid to long iron player than he is a wedge player. And so you got him on some shorter golf courses here in Florida. So No, it's not Augusta National. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> The other thing is maybe it can't get worse than this, Kyle, right? The trend, the trend being downward, horrible at Valspar. Now we've got to get the rebound. He does. He gains a little bit this week, doesn't play next week, but at home he picks up a little bit more. And then by the time we get to the masters, he's, he's the best. Yeah. I mean, I, I would love it. I would love it. If Fino won the masters, that'd be phenomenal. But I, the, his, his trend line had me a little bit worried uh, real quick. I want to talk about Scheffler. I, I don't know about you guys. I've had a hard time um, articulating to people. Like, I feel like I'm screaming about how good he is, and people are just like, "Yeah, I mean, he's playing pretty good. He's okay." And you're like, "You you don't you don't understand." Like, and I've tried to say it in a million different ways. I have a tweet today. I think this, if you're into golf, this says it very, 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 very well. This is total strokes gain since January first, 2024. So Scheffler leads the field. Wyndham Clark is second, Sahith Thagal is third, and Scotty Scheffler, if you only took his approach play, is fourth. <laughs> well, so he did strokes approaching the green at the Genesis. Do I? Uh, he lost a half a shot approaching the green at Genesis, which oh, I was yeah. worried about that trend line. Thanks for, thank, uh, okay. thanks, for <laughs> okay. bringing, thanks for bringing that up when Rick and I picked him for our one and done. That See, was not, going, I was not digging you at that, you but could, I yeah. could have. You could have got me either way. So you keep going down the list. See Wu, Jason Day, Zalatoris. You get to 11, and it's Scotty Shuffler again, his off the tee number only. <laughs> this is this is crazy. Like, if you only took his singular approach play, he'd be fourth in this field behind himself and two other guys in strokes gain. And if you only took his off the tee number, he'd be 11. That's nuts. This is like when... <laughs> Maybe you've done this, or I've seen this somewhere where it's like PGA Tour wins, Tiger Woods, Sam Snead, and yeah, it's like yeah. Tiger in Florida, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 California. And it's like <laughs> and it just keeps <laughs> Tiger and WGCs. Tiger has more wins in California than like Rory has PGA Tour. <laughs> it's uh, I just it's so wild, and he's what plus two fifty to win this week or something. Yeah, so this is, since I've been tracking odds, which is relatively short the last five years, but uh, I can tell you that basically anything post-Tiger, this is like the shortest odds in a full field event. Uh, you know, you remove the tour championship stuff. Rom was plus 350 at the at Mexico one year. Um, there's been a couple of guys like sub five to one, but plus 260 in a full field event. That is the uh, shortest shortest odds in like basically non modern non Tiger era. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really special. I mean, it's it's fun to cover. I think it's fun. We've we've entered the the phase of it where it's just super fun to. I mean, where it's historic, right? You're covering something that's that doesn't happen every year or every even three or five years. So. Uh, yeah, I'm excited just to see how that kind of unfolds, not just this week, but over the next three or four leading in, into, into the Masters and including the Masters. Well, since we already talked about what a problem uh, gambling has become, I think we should enter the, the gambling portion of the show, uh, uh, which we encourage you to 
bet all all I want is just bet responsibly, right? No yeah. when to lay up. That's all I want. No, no when to lay up is the the phrase that the PGA tour uses. Um, but yeah, just bet responsibly. So here's how we do it responsibly. We take a hundred bucks, 50 bucks on a matchup, 30 on a finishing position of our choice, and 10 each on two separate outrights. Uh Josh will now show us the grid. It looks like that. Oh, oh. There's some interesting stuff out here. Patrick, please lead us off with your matchup wager for the 2024 Texas Children's Houston Open. I'm going with Stefan Jaeger, minus 110 over Jake Knapp. Uh, these two kind of play well at the same golf courses when you look at Tori and Vedanta. I just think Jaeger's got a little bit of a higher floor. His cut streak came to an end recently. Got a week off, think he's going to come back rejuvenated, refreshed. The driver is in a really good spot. He's played well at this golf course before, and it's Jake Knapp's first time around. So I'm going to take the German minus 110 over uh, Napster, the Napster. Oh, the Napster will be making some appearances uh, later in the show as well. Greg, why don't you give us your matchup? Oh, and you're picking on, you're picking on a guy who had himself a pretty difficult Sunday last week. Yes. Um, that's not necessarily the reason I like Keith Mitchell. I thought this was a tough one, uh, but I really like Kurt Kitayama this week. I, I think he's been playing well enough. Um, it hasn't been great, but, um, but looking at his skill set, like you mentioned, Patrick, Mexico, I think is a really good course comp. Um, and he has done really well there. He won at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, um, another golf course that requires a lot of long irons. I know he missed the cut there this year, uh, but I really like the state of the game for Kurt Kitayama. Uh, I think his his skill set, especially outside, I mean, he's 11th on tour outside of 200 yards. Um, and, and I'm a little worried about Keith Mitchell and the emotional state, if you will. You know, it's been a couple weeks in a row where he's had himself near the lead and had some meltdowns. Maybe that's extreme, but had some tough days. Uh, and and I think there's a, a downturn for him this week. Kurt Kitayama, even money over Keith Mitchell. I opted for Siwoo Kim over Tony Finau. I'm not necessarily buying uh, the Tony Finau stuff in full just yet. And Siwoo's been an absolute flusher, and maybe he putts well. Maybe he doesn't, but I could say the same for Finau, and I think Siwoo's hitting it better than Finau is. KP, you have found a very interesting matchup for this week. What is it, please? I love Siwoo, by the way. I've, I've got him um, in some some later bets. But yeah, I've got the field over Scotty. I, I found this. Uh, it, if, uh, it's either brilliant or completely irresponsible because it's minus 400. So I get how many guys are in the field? 144? 100, I thought we were up to 150. Yeah. I think it's 144. Either or whatever it is. I, I get 100 I that. minus one. I get 140 versus one. And uh, minus 400 is a crazy number to get that at. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I should just start hedging all of Patrick's shuffler stuff. <laughs> yeah we've got we've got both sides of this of this covered we'll get to that in in just a little bit finishing positions so we've got three top 20s and a top 30 i've got mac hughes top 30 plus 115 greg we talked about this a little bit on monday he's just finding a way and i think more difficult golf courses are better spots for him i'm not usually a big fan of hughes but Got to tip the cap to him, and I thought this was a pretty good number. And the guy that you chose uh, also makes an appearance on my card later as well. So we're, we're kind of in lockstep there. Yep. Um, I like the Hughes pick. I went with Jake Knapp for a top 20. Um, and look, Patrick and I can both win here because I like Steven Yeager too. Uh, but Yeager's going to have to play really well to beat Knapp. Uh, I think he's coming to a place that fits his game beautifully. I've been really impressed with this short game on – a variety of different surfaces. I think the tight lies around this golf course are going to do well for him. And also you don't have to go make a ton of birdies out here. So his short game can really help him. And, and his, um, his iron play has been really good. The, the one area that looks really weak in the stats for him is his driving. 
And again, going to a, a park, a wide open golf course, I think he's going to have much more success here than he did in Florida. That is Jake Knapp, top 20 at plus 210. KP, I, uh, I circled this one. I almost got to the same one that you did. Please let the people know what that is. Yeah, I got Joel Damon top 20. He's been playing kind of some underrated, uh, really good golf over the last couple months. Uh, played great at the Players' Championship. Um, and yeah, I, I just plus 240 seemed like a good number, and I like him here. Patrick, round this out, please. Siwoo Kim, top 20, plus 150. Uh, race to the finish line there at TPC Sawgrass, final round 64. Really doing everything well. The putter's the big question mark. Maybe he found it. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he has a new one in the bag. I feel like he rotates a new one every tournament. But uh, I like the the approach numbers from him and, and where they're going to be hitting shots this week. I think it lines up with uh, his skill set. So top 24, the South Korean. Siwoo Kim, top 20. Jake Knapp, top 20. Joel Damon, top 20. Mackenzie Hughes, top 30, which leaves us with two outrights each. KP, you have foreshadowed one of yours, Siwoo Kim. And I like that we've got a good mix of kind of takes on guys this week. So give us your two outrights, please. Yeah, I've got... Uh, Siwoo, I think, is in fact shaking that ass and uh, playing playing excellent golf right now. Um, he's kind of interesting for the Masters. I don't know that he's going to win the Masters, but uh, he's played very well there, and I could see him finishing in the top 10. So love the way he's hitting it. And then I actually am going against Greg. I, I like Keith Mitchell this week. Um, I think that He's obviously hitting it very well, and he did this at players also. I, I'm kind of betting on he's going to keep it. He did it for two rounds at players, three rounds last week. I need all four uh, this upcoming week. Um, he's figured out, and he he talked about this. You and I talked about this, I think, Rick. He's figured out kind of hitting changeups, like hitting off speed pitches into into greens. And he was like, "It's embarrassing that it's taken this long in my career to figure this out." But I think he's really like fixated upon that. And he's had a really good year so far. His approach play has been awesome. Uh, like you can tell in the data that what he's saying is true. And I think 35 to one just for him is seems a little bit too long, given how well he's hit it at times over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's it is fascinating to see if he can uh, put four rounds together. That's that's really what we're asking. Yeah out of him 35 to one for Keith, Keith Mitchell 30 to one for Cebu Kim Patrick you and I have a little bit of overlap here so why don't you go first and let people know who you have selected yeah I'm with KP for Cebu Kim 30 to one and then the winner of the golf tournament will be Sahith Thigala 22 to one I think there's a case to be made he's a top six American player in the world at the moment uh playing some really good golf uh, you think about top five at the Phoenix, uh, top tens at the API and the Players Championship, wide open golf course like Memorial Park should suit his eye as well. And uh, I mean, KP, you talk about Siwoo for the Masters. Sahith could be a sneaky pick also yes. given his success last year. So uh, I, I love the way this guy's playing right now. And I think it's uh, time for him to get back in the winner's circle. Yeah, I, I think Sahith at the Masters is is another I'd circle him as a top. I think he finished top 10 last year. Around there for sure. I just remember the uh, the chip on 16. Tiger-esque, some would say. Yeah. He was banging <laughs> balls off the grandstand. I mean, he's all over the place in general, and that course allows for it. So I, I, I'm i I'm, I'm with you, Patrick. I think he's, he's interesting at Augusta. Well, you guys nailed it. I also have Sahith here because he can bang it around with uh, no issues at this place, and he's playing some of the best, most consistent golf that we've seen him put together. So I've got Sahith at twenty-two to one, and then I, uh, I'm with Greg here. Jake, Jake Knapp, fifty-five to one. I think the skill set is really good. His he doesn't model very well because he had a couple of horrid rounds where he found multiple water balls, and it just has destroyed his already small sample size. So uh, I'm bending a knee to the eye test a little bit. So I thought, I thought you would like that, Patrick. There you go. Yeah. Not necessarily the model to back it up, but it's Sahith and Jake Knapp for me, Greg, look at these two big boppers that you picked. Yeah. Let's just go for it. Scotty Scheffler, 
Okay. Uh, he need, just needs to be on the card. It's plain and simple. He's going to win three in a row heading into the Masters. And I'm going to take advantage of it, even though it's very small margins for me. Maybe I need to come up with a parlay to try to up the margins. Yes. And that up the margins for the other guys. Some quarter unders. A can't miss. A can't miss uh, risk free investment. Yeah. Uh, So I like, I like Scott. That's a, that's a shot. (laughs) Shout out to Reese. (laughs) Uh, And Tony Fino. Love the trend. And I'm writing off the Valspar event. So we'll see what happens. But uh, coming back to a place he's defending. Uh, and I think he puts up a really good title defense this week. Scotty Shuffler, Tony Finau, Sahith, Siwoo Kim, Siwoo Kim, Keith Mitchell, Sahith, Jake Knapp. Those are the outright selections. And then what we do is we beg Josh for an extra 50 bucks and he gives it to us. And then we're allowed to put that on anything in the whole wide world that we want. Thanks to Patrick's hot run and contributions from Greg. We are up as a team. 8.7%. I think KP, you and I have got to get that red turned to black. So where are you going, KP, to make that happen? Yeah, I am going back to Siwoo Kim, top 20, plus 120. Again, he's been he's been hitting it. He's been playing really, really good golf. He's he's been right around that top 15, top 20, top 25 mark for really five or six straight starts now. Hasn't always finished inside that top 20, but this is one of the weaker fields that he's played in. I think he gets it done at plus 120. I went with Martin Trainer to finish inside the top 40 at plus 190. Greg and I uncovered this diamond in the rough on <laughs> Monday. And let me read to you what Martin Trainer has been up to in his last five starts. T8 in Chile. That was a Corn Ferry Tour event. T19 in Mexico. Okay. That's a PGA Tour event. T5 in Argentina. He missed the cut in Puerto Rico. Don't worry about that one. And then he finished fifth in Macau on the Asian Tour just two weeks ago. That is four top 20s globally in his last five starts. I don't need that. I just need a top 40 at plus 190. I pick Martin Train. Is he going to make the Olympics? Because he's a Frenchman. Him and Richard Gasquet. Pavone? (laughs) You, you, you got a uh, Pavone and um, Victor Perez also, oh. I believe, in the mix there. Yeah. Trainer, Is trainer Walter. French. Because no. I didn't remember Me. the uh, statistic that uh, Pavone was the first French guy to win since World War II. I think they totally he, stripped him of uh, of Martin Trainer. Well, I think he, I think he claimed dual citizenship after he won that or something. Mm, he sabatinied it. Yes. I have, so. I have it right here. So in July of 2022, he switched uh, representation with the International Golf Federation. Uh, his mother is French, and he was born in, I'm going to butcher this, Patrick, Marseille, France. Is that right? Sure. I've only been to Paris. <laughs> well, wait, that's where, that's uh, where I got pickpocketed. <laughs> so he lives in palo alto he grew up and went you know went to southern california usc but he is a frenchman okay very interesting so you could what if a a player who's playing on an american Ryder cup team switched citizenship would they could they play on both Ryder cup teams potentially where was was xander's dad born he is german i think he's german he competed for germany in the olympics i believe so could Xander go to the International Golf Federation and say, hey, my dad is German. I'm going to switch to Germany. And now I want to play for the European Ryder Cup. Win, win a gold medal for <laughs> it, it it gold seems like, for Germany. Yeah, it seems like those rules are a little like fungible. Yes, they remind me of the... I don't know why I thought of this, but the world baseball classic rules, KP are <laughs> very fungible. Yeah. It's like you, your parents, your grandparents, if wherever they were all born, plus if you've spent a week on vacation <laughs> somewhere, you're eligible for that country as well. Like it totally. is really fun. Patrick could go to, could be a French. Yes. He's been to yeah. Paris. If you understand 10 words in our language, you're in. Yes. So I don't know what the actual rules are, but they feel pretty loose. They do. Well, it, it, I mean, they got to f- some of those teams. It's it gets tough. They've they've 
you know, they'd be calling players of our caliber up and being like, Hey, can you, can you give us an inning or two? Right. Right. <laughs> so they're bad. Yeah. They're willing to take, they're willing to take uh Hey, my great, great grandparents are from wherever. No exactly. problem. Siwoo Kim top 20 for Kyle Martin trainer top 40 for me, Greg, you have gone back to the well here with your best bet. Tony Fino. Uh, if you're going to say it, you better back it up. This is just in case um, my other outright is correct. So I got Tony Fino top 20 backing off a little bit in case Kyle's correct. And the trend line is in fact going downward. Um, it's a little bit of a softer landing opportunity here for the best bet. Patrick, this wager, this specific wager has turned you from the biggest loser <laughs> to the biggest winner. It saved uh, your life. Two straight weeks of, uh, of Scotty Scheffler victories, and now you are rewarding him with another. I, I loved the show, The Biggest Loser, back in the day. Shout out to uh, Jillian Michaels. Uh, but yeah, Scotty Scheffler to win three to one. Three to one is implied probability of 25%. Is that correct, Rick? Uh, that is correct. So yeah, I think that's fair. I think Scotty Scheffler wins this golf tournament one in every four times, maybe even, maybe even more, to tell you the truth. And honestly, I thought I won this bet last week as well with Justin Thomas. I turned my phone off after Friday, however, and <laughs> it's a bloodbath on Saturday. So we, we need to get back, get back on the wagon. Scotty Shuffler, three to one. Just another fun stat, since we can't say it enough. Over the last 12 months from T to green, Scotty Shuffler has gained uh, 3.16 strokes per round. Colin Morikawa is in fifth on the PGA Tour, 1.58. Scheffler has doubled up Colin Morikawa from T to green over the last year. Over a it's, year. That's disgusting. A year. That's the other thing is um, remember when he won four out of six and it was like, wow, that's a great two months. Let's see if he can do it for six months. And then when he got to six months, it was like, hey, let's see if he can do it for a year. Okay. Yeah. It's we're on like two years now. Yeah. He, he's for sure the next. It, it's it's been it's been Rory and Rom for if you go back 15 years, Rom's more like half of that eight years, you could maybe throw DJ in there. Scotty's the next in line there. Like in terms of consistency at, at the top, he, he hasn't reached the Rom level yet. And in, in terms of length of doing it, but he's next in line for that. You're not going to get any arguments from me about that special, special stuff. Just one final thing to do gentlemen. Uh, and that is to reveal the one and done selections. But before we do that, I don't know if Josh, if you caught this, but we are we are being honored with the presence of a great saw this. in the chat. Not wow. Johan Immelman. Not Johan Immelman, but wine lover Johan is here to let everybody know that he is lurking on the top of that leaderboard with over nine million dollars earned fifth place out of i don't know a thousand people whatever it is he is here saying come come and try it and we will so josh release those one and done selections please we almost had to penalize kyle today because he did not put his pick into the outline but thank goodness he put it into run your pool so kp we let you we let you go on that one. It, what is the official rule there? Is it whatever I say it is at the time? <laughs> wow. and how much, yeah, it depends on who it is and how much it benefits me and how much content we can get. The out. Guy in last, really, uh, really high and mighty. <laughs> yeah, just whatever's best for the show and drama is usually what we go with. Great. So we'll accept it. I, I got my pick in. I, I it was in people in the chat or stirring it up. I put it in run your pool. I just didn't. First of all, we shouldn't be putting it in the outline because it creates an unfair advantage for whoever goes last. Mm -hmm. And and you know who I think goes last, Kyle? It might be the guy who's currently leading. I, I don't want to throw out any accusations, but <laughs> it would make the most sense. 
Well, I'll put it this way. I've never seen his pick in the chat in the uh, in the outline. You know what? That's true. That's a good point. I think that there is a little funny business happening here where the guy who produces the show and and controls the outline waits until all the picks are in before he makes his own. I think we might have mm-hmm. to teach producer Josh. He doesn't have to put his picks in there. He's going to type it in himself. He knows. Think about this as well. Josh never doubles up on someone, right? He never does. Mm. What? He does this he, week when he Kyle has week. the late pick? Hmm. Ooh. Fishy. <laughs> Fishy. Wow. Great. Wow. Yeah. Pins you think? hats. Makes you think. Is, we, I, we might need an Otani-like uh, press conference out of producer Josh. At the very least, we need to launch an investigation, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. let's give him, you know, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but I hope he cooperates and we're going to have to really dive into the logs. What I think is going to have to happen here. Yes. And in the meantime, I will take over the reins. <laughs> we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> well, I still get to go first because I'm in last place. I have $1.9 million. I'm going with Sahith Thigala. We have discussed why I like Sahith this week, and I need money in the worst possible way. KP, you're $800,000 clear of me. Who'd you pick? Yeah, I'm tripling down on my guy, Siwoo. Uh, I mean, now I don't know what to root for because I don't need Josh getting another million and a half, but I do need to catch up to the rest of these fools before, uh, before we get into major season. We're going to have to start adding live events. And get to give us a chance at four million bucks every week. Yeah, Euro Tour, Olympics, whatever you want to do. <laughs> how much? How much do you get to win the Olympics? Just, just get a gold medal, a gold. You get the, you get the price of the gold. I don't know what yeah. that is. But, I mean, oh, in your country's pride, that that's invaluable. Yeah, you melt down the gold and sell it, and yeah. Do do medalists get to? Uh, they come back automatic, automatically. Is that how that works? I, I was wondering this, Patrick, because Dan Hicks was saying, oh, Xander defending his his uh, gold medal this summer. And I was like, is he? I mean, I, mean, I think he's going to be in the top four for the U.S. regardless, but he, he acted like it was a done deal. Yeah, I need my I need Sabatini back in there. I've never heard that. Yeah, I don't. I think you got to qualify. That's yeah, probably this- right. Yeah, you got to qualify. It's the Olympics. You got to qualify yeah. every year. Everybody. Oh, yeah. it's well, not the, the Olympics isn't really the, you know, high and tight, you know, really well run organization now. <laughs> <laughs> not to point any fingers here. Like the so, first cut one and done. I saw an amazing, amazing tweet from uh, Garrett Morrison, Fried Egg. And it was oh. about Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz won the. Uh, Australian Grand Prix this or last week. And he said, I'm Carlos Sainz said, I'm still jobless for next year because uh, what what's his name's taking his spot? Hamilton. Uh, yeah, Lewis Hamilton. And Garrett Morrison said, I assume he'll at least get a sponsor exemption into the 2025 Monaco Grand Prix. <laughs> Seriously, though, that's sick. Uh, gold medals are not worth what you think they're worth, unfortunately. Uh, if, you, if you melt it down, the ones from the Tokyo Olympics 2020 were worth $820 worth of gold. Oh, now if you sell it on the, you know, eBay, you can probably get between 20,000 and $50,000 for it. the eBay. And then also, uh, you know, some countries will pay you if you win one. So like, I mean, South Korea pays you a lot. They like don't make you do the. Dollars. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. But I don't know. Uh, I went with Sahith. Kyle went with Siwu. Patrick, your pick. Yeah, I'm going with Sahith as well. Um, yeah, I just I think he's going to win. And so I'm going to pick him. It's a bold strategy. You have 4.9 million. Mark, something feels fishy about this too. 5.5 million selected Alex Noren. Haven't said his name for an hour. Mark comes in here with his inside information and picks Alex Norin. Greg, you have stayed true to yourself at 6.1 million. Who have you selected? Jake Knapp. Just think it. I think he's going to have a great week. 
as previously stated. Doubling down. <laughs> Triple, maybe. Josh, the asterisk boy, currently under investigation, has opted for Siwoo Kim at $6.8 million. So, just to... Oh, boy, he's got the logs. Mm, you know, these could be doctored. Mm, 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 yeah. You could do anything with AI these days. Mm, Thanks for mm. doxing Greg there, by the way. <laughs> yeah, if anybody wants to email Greg, his email is on the screen right now. Yeah, yeah there it is. Send it along. <laughs> Dude, Greg, Greg, you do not want to do that. Trust Greg me. wants... Greg wants uh all your free he, he sends your swing videos he'll give you free swing advice <laughs> there all is you gotta still, do is email me <laughs> there's still one guy who subscribes me to a cat newsletter i unsubscribe every week and he just keeps on subscribing <laughs> my email yeah, after i gave out my email on this show well thanks for giving <laughs> giving everybody the idea patrick <laughs> that's just like uh i'll give out my email i was like don't do that you definitely don't want to do this and he's and he was like no i'm gonna do it he did i'm like and then everybody subscribed into stupid a cat newsletter. What is yeah. that? Like like lions, tigers? No, like kittens, like home cats, like what to buy your cats, what, what actually, what's going on with the uh, scratch toys and all that. Sounds very stuff. useful. It, it's actually it pretty miserable. Wholesome. It's wholesome compared to what you could have got. That is true. true. Yeah. It could it dude. Could we have stuff. we have coyotes in our neighborhood. Dude, coyotes are no joke, and they can jump higher than like 12 feet. I believe it. They're out in like broad daylight. They're hungry. It's we, not, I we, mean, we have a little dog, so we're on a coyote alert all the time. Well, we mm -hmm. have a little kid. Yeah, you should be on coyote. So we're definitely on coyote alert. <laughs> no, so they sell they sell little vests that dogs wear with spikes on the outside. You should get one for your children. <laughs> they would kill each other. <laughs> they would just run into each other. They look like the American gladiators when they wear them. <laughs> Maybe get the uh, the bubble ball that they play like bubble soccer in. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you this, Rick. Or hamster balls. Uh, I was on a walk with my wife yesterday. We we're talking about just nothing. Oh, we we're talking about the Masters, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, um, I'm excited. Rick will be there. I've never he's never been, or I've never been there with him. Have you ever been? I've never been. Okay, so you've never been. Um, and she was like, Rick man, that guy. And I was like, what? And she was like, I just, I don't understand how he doesn't listen to music. That's crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's my legacy. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I mean, he's a pretty normal, like, it's not that crazy. And she was like, I just don't understand that. <laughs> it's so funny because I was thinking I, so I drove to, I drove to the golf course this morning and it was like 20 minutes and I drove in silence and I was thinking, should I, I thought there was a moment where I was like, should I turn music on? And I was like, nah, and I just, <laughs> <laughs> it's good thinking. So time. good. So good. It's, it's good thinking time. Uh, officially Josh, Siwoo, Kim, 6.8 million, Greg, 6.1, Jake, Nat, Mark, 5.5, .5, Alex, Norman, Patrick, Sahith, Tigala, 4.9, Kyle, Siwoo, Kim, 2.7, Rick, Sahith, 1.9, uh, Singapore, Pays the most for a gold medal. Ooh. Do you want to take a guess at how much it is? 1.2. Not a bit. No. Really? That would be a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, go, so yeah, I mean, it's go go in the direction that you think. But I'll not say $100,000. Dollars, U.S. dollars. I'll say $1 million flat. One million dollars. No, seven hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars. Wow. A bronze, they'll pay you eight one hundred and eighty-four thousand. They must not get a lot. Okay, Singapore. Yeah, they're, they're not dealing with any Michael Phelps. Do you know what the <laughs> Do you know what the U.S. pays for a gold medal? Like twenty-five thousand dollars. I think that's right. That sounds right. Uh, my official source on Wikipedia says 37,000. So we're close. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we ex expect gold. Singapore's had guys. five medalists ever. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, Sweden, nothing, nothing Good. at all. Love that. Probably because winter Olympics, they would be bankrupt. <laughs> uh, the other highest paid golds, Chinese Taipei, Hong Kong, Thailand, Indonesia, and Kazakhstan all pay at least two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a gold medal. Wow! There we I go. Move. I got a. 
What is citizenship? <laughs> France pays 21K for a bronze. Maybe that's what Martin Trainer's going for. This uh this Singapore guy won the gold at the hundred meter butterfly at Rio. And he, wow. he got how much how much did he win? Seven hundred thirty seven thousand dollars. Phelps finished fourth. Wow. Mm. And I'm... and Lochte was kidnapped that Olympics or something, right? At the gas station. Oh, that's when he got um he faked it. He got the uh who was the <laughs> the guy in Hawaii? Um Manti Teo. No, no the, the golfer. Uh oh, yeah. Yeah, he got Robert <laughs> Allen beaten. Uh wait. So the what are the other medals in for Singapore? Swimming was not going to be one of my guesses. Uh t table tennis and weightlifting. Yeah. Oh, those were going to be my guesses. I was going to say okay, fencing. So, so table tennis, two medalists, both bronze. Um, actually three because they there was a team. Um, they were in women's singles and women's team table tennis. Women's team table tennis in 2008, and then weightlifting in 1960. So those are your five. Wow, Singaporean. Okay, so they've no only way. ever had like a couple hundred Olympians. No wonder they're willing to pay for a little bit of a uh, little bit of success. A little gold. Yeah, a little gold. Even even a little bronze. They'll take that too. All what right, a, what, what a pod. Got... You get tennis news, weight Singaporean weightlifting news. Nobody else is breaking stuff like this down. Nobody else is doing it. Nobody else is doing round by round recaps. Nobody else is even gonna say we've run the gamut and I'll still open this up. Anything else you guys uh, need to get off your chest? No. Oh, is that a weightlifting reference? <laughs> <laughs> free free otani's translator i forgot his name you think he's innocent ipe i, I think otani's innocent i think i think otani definitely covered his losses for him which i understand is illegal but i also feel like is not that big of a deal i am 100 with rick but he just has to say i didn't know anything because but otherwise. there's they're burying that guy. I know he's getting crushed. Like they're just just lighting him up on the way out. Yeah, they threw him under the bus and then they backed up the bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe That's they good. maybe they'll send him a little little hush money, you know? A little uh hey, thanks for thanks for being the scapegoat. Maybe he should he's gonna hit a used, homer tonight. Bet the he should have done those parlays on DraftKings instead of getting an illegal bookie. <laughs> Shohei's going to strike out in the first inning and then remove himself from the game. Bet it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Major League Baseball starts on Thursday. This golf tournament starts on Thursday. There is basketball on Thursday. There's a lot happening this week. Very exciting times. Uh, big thanks to producer Josh. Does all the hard work behind the scenes. Greg Ducharme at The Real GFD. Patrick McDonald at P. McDonald CBS. Kyle Porter at Kyle Porter CBS. And you can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time.